in this video, I'm going to talk about positive line bundle. So to set things up, let uh, X be a compact complex manifold. And I am attaching to it a line bundle L. So this is a holomorphic line bundle. So line bundle means just to recall, it's a holomorphic vector bundle whose rank is equal to one. Okay, to such uh, holomorphic line bundles, one can associate obviously a Hermitian metric. So let H be a Hermitian metric on L. Now, due to the fact that L is one dimensional, uh, the vector bundle, uh, Hermitian metric are particularly simple in this case. So let's take a look at how things stand in a trivialization. So if you pick alpha, tau alpha, right? so this is a trivialization of L, right, where u alpha, right, so this is a finite cover of x, the fact that x is compact, this is possible, right, so what the trivialization will do, right, just to fix the convention, right, it will take u from u alpha cross c to uh, l restricted to u alpha in a biholomorphic manner, so that you are linear here in the second component, right? So this is linear. And also, as you know, the transitions that I will call T for transition, uh, beta alpha, right? So these will operate on the overlaps between the U alphas and the U betas and will take you to GL one C, but one for the fact that L is a line bundle. Now GL1C is, as you know, just a C star, right? So the transition maps in this case are simply just non-vanishing holomorphic functions on the overlaps. Okay, so something that you're probably familiar with, right? So we're going to denote the restriction of the Hermitian metric H on a U alpha by H alpha. And again, this just simply means you take a look at H, the Hermitian metric H, using the trivialization tau alpha. Now, due to the fact that everything is just one dimensional, right? This, and using the fact that obviously Hermitian metrics are positive definite, each H alpha, you can simply look at it as a function from U alpha to R plus, all right? So just a positive smooth function. Okay, and then one last thing, the transition between the H alphas, right? So when you look at H alpha, on the overlap between U alpha and U beta, then this is going to be, has to be the same as the H beta composed with the transition. Okay, but the transitions, as you know, are holomorphic functions, right? That are non-vanishing. So when they, uh, when you plug them into the H beta, right? They will come out as T beta alpha, absolute value squared, right? Due to the fact that T beta alpha times T beta alpha conjugate is absolute value squared times the H beta restricted to U alpha intersect U beta. Okay, so what's interesting here is, is what happens when you take the log and the ideal del bar, right, of, of this uh, transition identity. So, so let us first take the log. When you take the log, you're going to get log of H alpha, right? So th this in this trivialization makes sense because the H alpha, as you know, it's, it's just a, a smooth uh, function into R plus. So this restricted to U alpha 
better should equal, right? So log of uh, T beta alpha plus log of T beta alpha bar plus log of H beta restricted to U alpha U beta. Okay, so now let's take the I del del bar, both sides. So we're going to see I del del bar of log of H alpha U alpha U beta. Now, when you take the I del del bar of these two terms, okay, this will vanish when you take the del bar and this will vanish when you take the del. So all that is left is just the H beta term. So all this tells you, all this tells you is when you look at the I del del bar of these uh, expressions here, they are globally well-defined, right? Because on the overlaps, because on the overlaps, they are the same. So it makes sense, it makes sense to write. So one can write, right? So without what I just said, this would be, this wouldn't make much sense. So, but I can say that negative I del del bar of log of H, right, is a global one, one form on X, right? And it's also closed, right? Because each of these terms here, right? Each of these terms, uh, when you take the D, they are going to, become zero, right? So also, so let me call this curve form theta of H, okay? So theta of H is, let me just perhaps repeat myself a little bit. So is a closed, it's also real, one, one form on X, okay? Another way to arrive at this one one form is if, if you know what the churn connection is of a Hermitian metric, then theta H, and this is again, just for those of you that actually know what the churn connection is, this is actually going to be the curvature. Churn connection. We're, we actually will not need this factoid. So I'm okay to just, Leave this as a serious uh, comment here. Okay, so back to the present present situation. Uh, so this is a closed real one one form. So let's uh, let, let let's uh, so 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 what we learned is that if if one starts with a Hermitian uh, uh, metric on on a line bundle, you get a closed real one one form out of it which is some sort of curvature uh, notion. Okay, so now let's suppose I start with another one. Let's see if I start with another one, how it will relate to this theta H. So, so let H prime be another uh, Hermitian metric L, all right? So again, due to the fact that we're one dimensional, right? You can write H prime as H times a, a smooth, uh, positive uh, a scaling factor, right? So we're in one dimension. So, so it, it, it makes sense and it will, this will be clear in a minute to write the scaling factor as e to the negative u or u some smooth function on x. Why is that? Well, let's see what happens when I compute the theta h prime. So this should be negative i del del bar of log of h prime is negative i del del bar of log of h times e to the negative u. So now you will see, right? So it, negative i del del bar of log of h plus i del del bar of u. Okay, so this is theta of h plus i del del bar of u. So, uh, and this is the relationship between the curvature of H prime and the curvature of A. So, so what you see is that the Durham cohomology class 
definitely is definitely the same. Okay. And then this has a name. So if you don't know what the churn class is, this could be your definition of a churn class of L. So this is going to be the churn class C1 of L. Okay, and there's another thing that you can extract from here. Okay, so now knowing that there is such a distinguished class, one can go backwards. So, so suppose that eta is a uh, closed uh, one one form such that uh, it's the ROM class is the churn class. Okay, so so you might ask the question. It, in such in this situation, can I find a Hermitian metric H prime whose curvature is exactly equal to eta? And the answer is yes, due to Hodge theory, right? So uh, Hodge theory, the del del bar lemma of Hodge theory that we covered uh, amply uh, implies right since eta is from the same class of C1L, so is uh, theta h, so that means eta is equal to theta h plus i del del bar of some w, w being a smooth form, a smooth function. Okay, so now by the game that we just played here, you know that uh, h prime equal to h times e to the negative w, right, is a Hermitian metric L such that theta prime, theta h prime is nothing but, right, the eta, right, which is again, theta h plus i del del bar of the w. Okay, interesting. All right, so it's, it's almost as if there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between uh, representatives of the first term class and the uh, metrics here, metrics on the line bundle. This is almost true, almost meaning up to a constant. So up to a constant, these things due to Hodge theory are going to be in one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay, so the title was positivity of line bundle. So let me tell you real quick what that means. So we say that L, all right, so L, a positive line bundle if E1L, right? So the churn class of L has a representative one one form, uh, let's get eta, right? So this is a one one form that is scalar. So this one one form, in addition to being closed, it has to be also positive definite. Okay, so this is definitely something that doesn't always happen, but when it does, uh, we say that the uh, line bundle is positive. Now, let me just tell you, you know, that again, one reason why this is doesn't always happen automatically, right? The eta will be a Kähler form. So this will imply that X is a Kähler manifold. So as, as, uh, as we've learned, right, there's plenty of complex compact manifolds that are not killer. Okay, one more thing, right? So as we know, as I just showed you, uh, there exists a specific metric H, uh, Hermitian L, such that the curvature of H is nothing but the eta, right? Since this is positive definite, we say in this case that H is a positive metric. L. Positive metric, positive line bundle. Okay, one last, th one last thing I wanted to mention here. And then in the next video, I'll discuss uh, the connection of positive line bundles and the Kodaira embedding theorem. So one last thing to worth discussing is the following fact. This proof I will, for the most part, elaborate. So if L, 
on X is a positive line bundle. And then X prime is a embedded complex submanifold, so in particular compact, then the restriction of L onto X prime is also positive. And then the proof of this is essentially definition chasing. So, so how would that go? Well, this being a positive line bundle means that there exists H permission on L such that the curvature form theta H is positive definite on X. So this is a Kähler form on X. Well, as you know, if you have a Kähler form on X, the restriction of this Kähler form onto X prime is also positive definite. Okay. And then the thing that you have to see and that's essentially the proof is that this is nothing but the curvature of H restricted to X prime, right? Where again, what is H restricted to X prime is permission metric L restricted to X prime, right? So in particular, one additional content of this fact is that a positive metric on L restricts, so a positive metric of L on X restricts to a positive metric of L on X prime. And again, for this specific thing, and this, this is really the only thing that you have to think about a little bit here, what I just circled, just go back to the definition of uh, how we define the theta H. So just pick a trivialization in each trivialization look at what the Hermitian metric H looks like, and then see that everything that we've done is actually compatible with restriction to the smaller manifold X prime. So this will have, this, this simple fact will have an uh, you know, important, important ramifications related to the, Kodai, the famous Kodaira embedding theorem. I will elaborate upon in my next video.